You are listening to Setting History Straight with Linda Watson. And Tom Stapleton is with us today. Tom, we've been working on a series on the book of Daniel. We're going to cover Daniel chapter 7. Yeah, Daniel chapter 7. We covered Daniel 7 in the last program, which was part 1, correct? And so now we're going to pick up in the book of Revelations and tie it into the book of Revelations. And I believe that you're going to cover much of the information in Revelation 13. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, let's just, let's go into Revelation 13. So Revelation 13, uh, I want to read it just to get the impact, just a first few verses up to verse 6. It says, um, Then I saw on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. The fact that it's coming out of the sea, remember that the Messiah told his disciples they had to go to fish in the sea for people. So (laughs) that represents the Gentile unconverted people. The word Gentile is just symbolic, right? Just Mm -hmm. non-believer. And so that's basically a Gentile kingdom coming up out of the sea. It's not uh, an Israelite believing body. Right. Sense. Yeah, and that that comes clear, definitely comes clear in the prophecy as we go through this. That's very evident. And I think it's it's the kingdoms that Satan has dealt with through the century. And they they're really coming to maturity here. So he sees this beast coming up out of the sea. A beast. You can't miss that point. It's one beast. This thing has seven heads, ten horns, ten crowns. All of this means something. And the prophecies tell us heads are are the heads of state or uh, kingdoms. Ten horns and ten crowns. So it's dominance over ten nations. Now these ten crowns are representing these kingdoms are now all represented on one beast. You remember in Daniel where we saw four individual nations? Right. Of course, we had the lion and the eagle. That was two nations combined working together. Right. Uh, but they were all separate. They were all separate animals. Now, let's. this really takes an interesting twist here in verse 2. It says, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and the mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. Now this is, this to me is where this just busts wide open. We have in Daniel chapter 7, we have a lion and an eagle, a leopard, a bear, and a dreadful beast that's made up of ten kingdoms. That exact same thing here, only now they're working together. They're yes. all on one beast. This is the new world order. We see the kingdoms today as all working individually. But in Revelation, we're told that in the future, these kingdoms will work together. There will be one government. Exactly. And that's what this is, this is showing us. And it tells us who this one head is. It says in verse 3, I saw one of its heads as it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like it unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. There you go. This is exactly the same entity, this mouth speaking great things that this beast is given is a separate entity that rules the beast. And that's that's the same picture we have in um, in Daniel chapter 7. So now we have a new world order formed. There is one beast, there is one animal that is not here in this picture. We have a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a fourth kingdom with ten horns, and then there's seven heads, it says. I propose that the seven heads are what's left over of the fourth beast that used to have ten kings, and then three were taken out. 
So these are the seven remaining ones of that fourth beast. So those are those seven. We have a lion, a bear, and a leopard. We have the same kingdoms involved here. And I believe if they were different kingdoms, say if we're talking about the United States and Great Britain and, and China and Russia and so on, if that's who those represent in chapter 7 of Daniel, then if they represented different kingdoms, there would have been different animals represented in Revelation 13. Because they're the same animals, they represent the same kingdoms as we're looking at in, in that chapter of Daniel. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to ask you one thing, and that is about the bear, because the bear could be a symbol of Russia. But it's mentioned as Medo-Persian, meaning two nations together. And I can't help but think about how Russia and China have formed an alliance now and have come together as one, working together as one unit almost. Well, they are. They are working very closely. And just in the last few days, actually, they've made some agreements against the United States, against the West. And we're going to see that escalate a little bit more. However, I do believe there's going to be an event, a world event, that will bring them at least to a working arrangement with the West for a little while. And yes. it will be an emergency that takes place that they are going to have. And it's just like the Second World War. Who would have thought that Stalin would be working with the United States. I mean, they're just so diabolically opposed in a sense. Uh, but because they had a common enemy, they overcame those things. And of course, we know what happened after the Second World War. They became arch enemies. Right, uh, of course, yes. It's absolutely the case. Yeah, so, you know, history again has some lessons. The enemy of your enemy is your friend. Yes. <laughs> you know, that... That plays out over and over. And I think we're going to see some of that definitely in what's coming. Now, in Revelation 13, it tells us that there's another beast that comes out of the earth. Now, the, the beast that's missing in these first few uh, verses of chapter 13 is an eagle. There's no eagle in here. There's every, everything else, but there's no eagle. Right, right, uh-huh. It says in Daniel chapter 7 that the eagle is plucked off of Great Britain, and Great Britain now has to stand on its own, which is exactly what would happen. I believe that the eagle's wings are what's lifting England off the ground right now. If, if the United States wasn't backing England, and they have made some incredible financial arrangements for when they break loose from Brexit. This is already in place. Their military is already working together as well. So they have these arrangements. Um, but if the United States goes down as a first-rate nation and lose their status as the number one superpower, England will have to stand on its own two feet. Now, I believe that Revelation 13 is telling us something. When the nations of the world are coming together, so to speak, because of a, a disaster that's coming that no one really understands, and it's revealed in Daniel chapter 8, it's a war with the East and the Western nations, a war against the ideology of Islam and the ideology of, I would say, Christianity. And, uh, and Russia is actually part of that Christianity in the Eastern Orthodox. If, if anyone's been watching, Putin actually is courting the Eastern Orthodox Church because he knows, just like, um, just like Constantine and all the rest of them, they knew that if they could control the conscience of the people, they could control the people themselves. Right. And and Putin is no dummy. He knows that if he can get on side with the church, the Eastern church, then he can control the people in, in mass. And so Christianity as a whole is made up of more than just, you know, the United States or Great Britain and so on. Um, for the most part, it's a fallen, 
uh, picture of true Christianity, but nevertheless, they would, I could see them uniting on the commonality that they all have. You know, we don't know the future, but yes, things are lining up. They're lining up pretty quickly here. Mm -hmm. Now, in, um, in this next one is now we're going to get into a little speculation because now we're down the road. We're a little bit where Paul says we know in part and we prophesy in part. This is where we're crossing a line. And I'm hoping that the listeners aren't going to throw this out, but they will chew on this a little bit. In um, what I'm suggesting here is the deadly wound. It says, I saw one of its heads that had been mortally wounded and its deadly wound was healed. It's talking about the beast in general receives a deadly wound. One of its heads or one of the kingdoms receives a mortal wound. That kingdom is England. England and the United States, the United States is is taken out as the world uh, superpower, number one world superpower. And that's the deadly wound that this beast uh, takes, because this we're going to see this in Daniel 8 as well, same thing comes up again, is when the United States is taken out, the new world order is formed, and it becomes very strong, but it goes forward without the United States. Now people say, well, what happens to the United States? Well, in the very next verse, it starts to unpack this. In, um, in verse 6, it says, in, in verse 13, or chapter 13, he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those that dwell in heaven. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints, same thing as Daniel 7 that we saw, and to overcome them. And authority was given over every tribe tongue and nation so this beast power this amalgamation of these major kingdoms we're talking european union talking great britain russia and china these four great nations that come out of this are going to take control and they're going to give their authority to this single uh power that reigns for three and a half years and then it goes on to say in verse 8, and all that dwell on the earth will worship him whose names are not, have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now it goes into something interesting in verse 11 in chapter 13. It says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. So number one, the first beast is alive and well. And now he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. And it says he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound is healed. Now we've got a riddle. I'm not sure if you picked that up, Linda, but we've got a riddle here. That we have to figure out what's going on. Well, first of all, both beasts are alive and well. Exactly. And exactly. secondly, is that this second beast is it's going to support the first beast. Totally. It's exactly right. And, and so the second beast, who is it? Now, it has two horns, so it's got, it's going to be two, two nations together, possibly. Okay, very good. Because that's, that's letting the Bible interpret itself. The horns are the ones, the horns on a beast are the dominant kings that, that direct the beast. Now, the, it's amazing, and people, you know, the first time they heard this, oh, well, I don't know about that. John tells us when he knows and understands what the animal is. He, he saw a lion. He would have known what a lion looked like. He saw a bear, and he saw a leopard. He would have known those animals. Now, but he doesn't know this beast. He's never seen this beast it arises up out of the earth. Now, the other beast arose up out of the sea. So finish this chapter up here. This chapter actually 
uh, goes into a little bit of chapter 14 and we want to pick that up because this really solidifies the tie to Daniel chapter 7. So we see this, what I'm proposing here is these four kingdoms, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and these seven heads that are left over from the 10 from Daniel 7. These are all these kingdoms united without the United States of America. And, and with, there's no eagle here. So it doesn't have the United States of America. But this is not a one world order yet because the United States of America is not involved. It becomes the one world order when the United States becomes involved. So this, these nations, China, Russia, UK and the European Union are all on one side of this planet. They're across the sea, the Gulf, if you will, the Atlantic. Yes. So when this other power comes up and forms an image to the beast, in other words, a duplicate system of worship, that's what it's talking about, that he causes those to dwell on the earth to worship the first beast. So we're talking a religious political power here that is legislated. We saw this in Daniel chapter 7. He changes times and laws. He changes God's law. Obviously, you can't change God's law. That's why it says he thinks to change the law. So he, he proposes to change the law, make it illegal to worship God according to your conscience, according to the biblical mandate that we have to worship God. And then when the whole world now is on this, is what we're reading from verse 11 to 14. We're reading that the whole world now is on the system of the beast and is governed by the little horn power that we're told is given three and a half years. And this goes back to what I'm trying to help people understand. If we've got this little horn power that's going to rule this world for three and a half years, and make it impossible for you and I to buy and sell unless we accept his mark, which I believe are his laws, then we are going to have to be separate from this world. We're going to have to be in a place where we can survive during this time, and we're not going to be pressured to buy and sell. In other words, we're going to have to be self-sufficient if we're going to have to get through this. Uh, absolutely, I see that. Um, so what we're looking at here is this other beast that's coming up. Number one, John did not recognize what it was. I'm proposing when I look at the beasts of the world that this beast that has two horns like a lamb, I think what he's trying to say is this animal, he didn't know what it was, but it had a lamb look to it, had two little horns like a lamb. Now, <laughs> here again nothing takes god by surprise in the time of the end he's got two kingdoms that he united the two horns in canada and the united states i believe when canada and the united states form an alliance and they force everyone to follow the first beast in other words the system of the first beast which i believe is a fallen form of christianity that has changed the laws the Torah is not in effect anymore, and we don't need to celebrate Passover anymore because we have, we have Easter. We don't need to keep tabernacles anymore because we have Christmas. It's, it's just the whole world is making this shift to, uh, to this fallen state of Christianity. Which now, is really, which is true. But I think it's going to be secular. I think they're just going to leave God completely out. You know, that's well, the way I see it heading. I don't see it heading to any religious group. And, uh, and so I see it turning into a, to like a secular thing. In other words, they still keep Christmas, Easter, and all the pagan things, but they keep it because they don't want to worship nothing. Right. And so exactly. they, they eliminate God's laws because they don't want to worship anything. That's when it'll turn into a one world order. That's right. And and let's just be, you know, perfectly frank or honest, call it whatever. We're being honest anyways. But if we would be honest with ourselves, and I see this wherever I go, 
the places of the world, the Russias, the Chinas, the uh, European, and so on, America is really not their friend in their own minds. No, they, they are not, but they do understand her authority. Yes, absolutely. You know, when we enter this time, we're talking about the time of trouble now. This, all of what we've read here is part of that great time of trouble. And we're entering a time in exactly what you just said. For the, for the most part, the people that are part of this new world order and one world order, they do not believe in God but they will follow whatever instructions they're given. You know, and, it's very interesting when you start putting this to history, that you, when you begin to see that there is an actual kingdom that has been ruled over by, by Satan, you know, throughout history. It, it started, started in the Middle East with Babylon, then it continued. And that's the seven, that's those kingdoms that you're talking about, the heads that have rose and, and fallen and rose and fallen. I mean, those have gone up and down. And it, it's very interesting to see that lineage because I can trace the lineage of Esau right into Russia. I mean, yeah. I, can, I can actually trace it and it's not hard to see. And so I see that there's two kingdoms one is Satan's kingdom and one is God's kingdom. Although God's kingdom, which are the Israelite nations, are really asleep. Mm -hmm. And so the whole point is, it's not that they're not there. You know, he tells you he's the king of Israel. And that God is, and Satan is the kingdom of, of the kingdoms of this world. Well, what does that mean? You know, it's going to come to a head between Satan's kingdoms and God's kingdoms. and Guess who's going to lose in, yeah. in the beginning? The people that have been asleep. So during this time that we have this one world order, we have the mark of the beast enforced. And this really is the straw that breaks the back. This, I believe, to be the little horn dominating, forcing worship in, on his terms. And he, at the pains of death, unless you worship this system, just like in Daniel's day, in Daniel chapter 3, the, the worthies, the Hebrew worthies were thrown into the fire, is that this persecution will take place. And unless you fall under their system and worship according to what their system, will, then you will be put to death. And this is what it's talking about here. So this is, again, why we need to separate ourselves. But at this time, when the mark of the beast is enforced, we see in chapter, chapter 14, which is a continuation. Remember, the chapters aren't there. Just a continuation of um, 13. It tells us, it shows us the 144,000, which is very significant because it would seem that everyone's going to be killed that are God's people. But God says, no, no, I'm going to have... Like he told Elijah, there's still 7,000. God says, no, no, I've still got 144,000 out there. Don't worry. You're not all going to die. Um, that's not going to be the case. In verse 6, it goes on to say, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. This is chapter 14 now. Right. Having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Now this to me is it, just amazing. How could a people, how could God's people say the hour of his judgment has come? Because the only, America falls. That America falls. And also, they know the prophetic calendar. They know that when God's judgment begins. Now, it's interesting in chapter 13, we have all these animals. And then we we'll see this little horn that controls. Then we see another beast rising up. And this, I believe, to be forming the, the, what was the New World Order in the first few chapters of 13 becoming the one world order when America and Canada and the rest of the world join, and that becomes the one world order. And then it says 
the mark of the beast is enforced across the world. And then God says it's time for judgment. In other words, the cup of iniquity is full and it's time to judge. And this is exactly what we saw in Daniel chapter 7 is that the judgment came and the little horn or the mouth speaking great things was destroyed. And we see that also in Revelation chapter 17, verse 16, it says, And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, that's what we just read about in chapter 13, these will hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Yes. This to me is justice. These kingdoms that have aligned themselves with the harlot, which is, I believe, the little horn that speaks great words. It's the same power. It just changes shapes. Um, and this little horn power, the harlot, is destroyed by the kings that exalted her. It says because God has put it in their hearts to do this. God has always let nations ju execute the judgment upon other nations. We see this in history, all through the, the history of the world. And, uh, and he's going to do that at the end of time as well. Um, so we see we're looking. So let's try and sum this up, shall we? Okay. We can see the great nations of the world. And they're all jostling for number one power right now. That would be the lion, the bear, the leopard, and, and the dreadful beast, as well as the eagle. We can see an alliance between an eagle and a, and a, uh, and a lion. We can see a bear that it says, arise and devour much flesh. I'm proposing that that's, that's actually Russia. I think and, so. And they're going to arise and devour much flesh. Now, if the eagle goes down, there's nothing stopping USSR or Russia to become the USSR again. Russia wants some things on this planet and its territory. They want Ukraine and they want some of these republics that they lost. The only thing that's holding them in check right now, I would suggest, is the United States of America. Right. The and that could be the satellite countries that they take could be those three ribs. Exactly. They will arise. When the United States goes down, there will be nothing to stop Russia to do whatever they want to do, and they will arise. China as well. China is keeping themselves in check right now because of the United States. If the United States goes down, I would propose that Taiwan and all these nations that have a Western alliance would shift it to China. <clears throat> Possibly no. even in, including Japan. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention when you say America goes down, it may not be technically dead, right? But she may lose, she, her stock market and her ah. economic system may crash. Exactly. And that could be the deadly wound, believe me. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. That would allow all these nations to do what they wanted to do. Right, right, exactly. And we see that the United States, and your point is, is very good because the United States is not gonna be finished when they're down. We see them again, actually rising up out of the earth. But I believe that Canada and the United States would be an incredible powerhouse uh, if and when they unite. Well, yeah. Tom, thank you so much for coming on with us. This has been very insightful because there you covered much information in here. And so thank you for coming on with us and we're gonna say blessings to all and good night.